The next session coming up is um, get, get it right in the construction industry. It's a very important topic because the construction industry is one of the big risk uh, industries uh, in mental health. And also you can get it right anywhere. And if that's not a theme for today, I don't know what it is. So we welcome, I hope you're all sitting under your... We've been that's very good. good. So, that, so that'll be Jocelyn Shaw, CEO of Mates and Mind, to facilitate, facilitate the session. Um, and uh, you'll be joined by Steve Cox from... Bam, is that right, Bam Nuttall? Don Moore from Morgan Sindel and Martin Coyd from Mace. So I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. I hope everyone can hear us. Um, apologies, we had a bit of a technical issue with the mic, so um, I do hope, I'm very grateful for your patience in, in waiting for us, but we're delighted to be here. And I know that we've been advised that we will have a discussion for about 25 minutes, and then we'll open um, to a couple of questions from the floor, which are being moderated through Slido. Um, so please do participate on the social media and give us a steer in terms of what uh, topics you'd like us to pick up. But uh, if I could start with you, Dawn, and just give us a 30-second overview of yourself please. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, my name's Dawn Moore, I'm the HR Director for Morgan Sindel. Um, I actually became involved in um, the mental health agenda uh, professionally as part of our uh, wellbeing and inclusion programme, uh, but actually it also has quite a lot of personal resonance for me in that um, I grew up from a very young age with, with a mother who suffered from quite severe clinical depression. Um, but it wasn't until I got into my teenage years that I actually realised what that was and the impact it had had on her work and also our family life. Um, so, so for me, this is, a, this is a great opportunity to bring those two together in terms of experience. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Steve Fox, Chief Exec of BAM Nuttall. So we're a civil engineering contractor, uh, wholly owned by Dutch parents. Uh, so obviously I've got a broad range of responsibilities in that role. Uh, so I was really responsible for really getting our, our journey going on the mental health agenda about three years ago. Martin Coyd, uh, Head of Health and Safety at Mace Construction. I stumbled into this by accident. My uh, sport of choice is rugby league and we had a, uh, a suicide of an international player. The surprise was how many other rugby league players said uh, I'm in the same place and have considered this. And then caused me to think that the similarities between professional sportsmen and people who work in construction, i.e. very, very target-driven and focused, and we have to deliver projects in the way that sports people have to win medals and games. And it also occurred to me that the topic was never, ever discussed at any, under any circumstances in the, in the environment and culture we have, which is 1.6 million people working on site each and every day, and another million designing, manufacturing, delivering and cooking stuff um, to, to do that and uh, you know 9% of GDP and um, everything we do every day including this room and how we got here this morning is impacted and delivered by this wonderful industry that we work in. Thank you Martin. Perhaps to give it a bit of context um, as we said there has been some energy and the industry, the construction industry, has really been galvanised in terms of understanding that there is a need to look at mental health. There have been a growing number of statistics that have really been placing it within the context of the industry, but perhaps just to highlight a couple, certainly Randstad last year, in uh, the autumn of last year, having run a survey during the summer of construction workers, found that from that, 73% of the, the workers surveyed felt their employers did not recognise the early signs of mental health issues. And furthermore, that of those surveyed, <coughs> excuse me, 34% <coughs> excuse me, had indicated that they'd experienced a, a mental health um, issue in that year. More recently, HSC, so the Health and Safety Executive, have um, published their 2017-18 data where they said that stress, anxiety or depression accounted for 44% of all work-related ill health cases and 59% of all working days lost due to ill health. So those are some relatively large numbers just in terms of putting the context, but I'm going to ask my audience that, as we know with mental health, um, it's very much a case of addressing stigma and it's about starting that conversation to really begin that journey. And perhaps starting with you, Dawn, if I may, where and how did you start that conversation in your organisation? 
Um, I, I think one of the, the, the great things is there has been so much already done by way of publicity and research about all of this in construction, a lot of which you just mentioned, that that was a fairly obvious starting point. Um, but actually to really get senior people engaged, it, it was about translating it into practical things that you see and hear that sometimes you might, you might not realise actually are indicators that the somebody's mental health or the environment they're working or a mixture of both are not right. Um, I have the privilege of being in a job where um, I see probably a couple of hundred different people every week while I'm out and about in lots of different locations. Um, and I kind of use board meetings and other things to sort of, you know, where we all talked about some of the research, some of the statistics, and actually said, you know, do you realise? Um, nothing was personalised, nothing, nothing was obvious. Whereas, so look, I, I was out on this project the other week and I saw, and that might simply have been an observation about behaviour that, that was an indicator something wasn't right. Um, and, and that tended to create a realisation that actually we we do need to look at this stuff because it's happening around us every day. That triggered other people to share similar observations um, and often some quite personal experiences actually. Mm. And, then, and then you start to close that loop, well now we need to talk about what we do about it because, because we have the theory, we have the practical evidence, you know, what now needs to happen in our own organisation. Um, so, so I think taking the theory and the stats and, and sort of putting it in the practical world is a really important starting point based on what, what you see around you every day still in our sector I think. Yes, thank you. Steve, I don't know in terms of your perspective, seeing it from the top. Yeah, um, it's a shame the audience is so small. I mean, this is a leadership <laughs> issue, I, I think, and you know, that's, that's what it is for our business. Um, for me, there was a crossroads of two or three things that happened in my life, uh, and I bumped into something from somewhere else as well. Uh, and I suppose we all get a, a call at some point. You talked about yours, Martin, with, you know, where the suicide was in, in rugby. Um, and I suppose for me, it, just, it was just at the right time to actually realise just what was going on, understand a little bit what was going on that we needed to do something about. Uh, and it's, it's a leadership issue at all levels, uh, but it, it starts at the top, um, and you absolutely need the buy-in from that place. So for me, what can I do? I'm no expert, I don't understand this. All I can do is make it safe for people, make it safe from the top. Uh, we've rolled out, you know, we're rolling out a huge mental health first aid uh, uh, training programme. Uh, probably done about a third of what I want to do to about 300 people so far. We're looking at about 900 out of our 3,000 because we want to saturate all levels. It affects all the suppliers on our sites. You know, I hear a lot of people talking about what races you want, but you've really got to make these things accessible for everybody and demonstrate at all levels it is safe. Leadership from all levels. Uh, so I started in, in the boardroom with the senior management team. We, we did it over a dinner one night uh, and it was staggering the impact even in that room of what came out from there. I, People were genuinely surprised at some of the things that got said in the general conversation that followed. And that was small private conversations, not about we're going to open this up in the big chat. It was right from the start about making it safe for people just to chat in twos and threes. Um, so there's one thing you do as leaders, go out and show personally it's safe to talk. That's great. Thank you. And I guess thinking about the fact that we start that conversation, but it's actually really important to keep that conversation alive Martin, you've been talking about this for so long and really been, you know, taking the lead on this and with others like Health and Construction Leadership Group coming behind, this has really gained momentum. But how do, how do you in industry, how do you within the business, how do you keep people engaged on this conversation? Well, I agree and, and, and disagree with Steve. Uh, and it's great to see that type of leadership. It's not everywhere. There's a lot of fear from leaders about opening up this this world, is, and I'm talking about real fear. I heard a statistic this morning that 12 men will complete suicide today. Two of them will be construction workers. And if we use all these statistics, because 454 was the first year we measured construction worker suicides, and we didn't get all of them. Um, uh, you know, there were 10,000 construction worker attempted suicides this year, because they say for every um, one that's completed, there are between 10 and 25 uh, unsuccessful uh, suicides. We're talk, you know, it's that type of level. Um, my fear with it coming out of a boardroom is it becomes this year's initiative. So it, that, it's got to be, it's got to come from leadership. I absolutely agree with everything what Steve said, but it's also important to grow it from bottom up. My best experience was a, a five-way um, uh, joint venture between HR. Health and safety, and I'm shouting safety there, uh, industrial relations and employee relations, uh, a company, the company charity, um, and also sustainability. 
And, and that five-way thing meant it wasn't pigeonholed with anyone and it got real traction and it became a people's movement and, and grew itself. And it's the thing that gives me confidence when taking mental health into new organisations. I say, don't worry. Do, do simple things frequently uh, and, and it'll grow itself because I believe our nation is ready. Which of you had any education or training uh, around mental health and your emotions and how you felt when you were at school? <coughs> It's the same answer everywhere I go. So yeah. we've now got this awareness and recognition and people are hungry to find out. So although fear is normal, uh, be brave and, and good things will happen. I can see you nodding. Dawn, I don't know from your perspective. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the word initiative is something I always pick up on because the, <laughs> the one thing that I would say to, to anybody, and it's been very true of our journey in Morgan Cinder, we never refer to any of the things that we do on this agenda as an initiative. Um, I, I mean, and people who've been in the other sessions will say, you, you know, I hope a few years down the line in our organisation, as does everybody else, that conversations about this become normal. Um, so, so I would say never, never even call you training an initiative, even at a basic level. This is about changing thinking and behaviours and making this normal and that's been a big part where, where we have started with some of the senior leaders saying you have to role model that first of all because once you role model the right behaviours other people will follow that, that's not an initiative it's a culture change and, and, a, and for me and, and Morgan Sindler, that that's absolutely what this is about It's interesting, I mean in that respect do you think Steve, is there a, is there a need to sort of get that buy-in at the top level do you have to get the business case right first is that important? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? that was something that came up earlier in the session before, actually, about uh, people got budgets for this. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not in that world. I mean, you know, this is the right thing to do. If you need a calculation, I mean, if you haven't got a budget from that sort of world, if you need a calculation, work out, work out the cost of your time you're losing. You know, this, it, I think it's a sad sign that business, or too much business these days, says, what can I afford to do against against what I get out of it. You see a lot of this driven, I suppose, particularly in the PLC world, about justifying what we do, uh, when quite frankly, this is, this is obvious. You know, I mean, you've quoted some stats at the outset, and um, whichever stats you believe, you know, the point is, is it's a huge issue. It's very significant. The cost of it is very significant, both to, to people's personal lives and how they're feeling about the lives that are ruined that, haven't, that you can't see, as well as if you want to sit down and work out the direct cost to your businesses. If you start to work out the cost of that, your, your budget becomes insignificant, to be honest. So, um, but you do bump into it, you have this conversation regularly, people without saying, I can't afford to do this because it's gonna cost me this much for this bit of training. Uh, I, th I think we just need to help people actually work out, um, take a step back, you'll see the payback. Once you start doing it, you'll see the payback. I mean, it's been, it's been incredible. Well, I mean, I know we've saved lives in our business and around our business already. There's no doubt, I know personal stories of, of the lives that we've saved. You know, what's the cost of that? So um, I just urge people to get into that. You know, there are, if you need calculations, you have to just go look at the time you're losing. But really, you've got to take that leap of faith, actually. That this is a complete no-brainer. But Martin, would you say everyone's convinced? Do we still need to push through the message? No, I think we're just beginning. I also think it's easy in Morgan, Sundle, Bam and, and Mace, where I work, because the boss can say, say make it so. 94% uh, of people who work in the construction industry work for organisations of less than 10. It doesn't make them bad organisations, but they don't have the infrastructure. And of that 94%, 50% are self-employed. And a lot of the people working on our projects are self-employed, and, and they choose to do so. Um, nobody, nobody makes them do that, uh, but it's, it's very hard to reach out there. So the more we talk about this and normalise it, and, you know, the way I hear Steve as a CEO, just normalising a conversation gives permission for everybody else to do so. And if, and if we just do it, it becomes okay. This fear thing removes. Um, and, and leaders don't necessarily have to be the highest paid or longest serving. You can be the junior person in the team and lead mm -hmm. um, where, 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 where people will follow. So we, we just need to encourage and support people to do these really, really simple things. And authenticity is absolutely critical. I heard something next door about, I think it was the, the policeman said, don't make this a box ticking thing, that's a disaster. And he's yeah. absolutely right. So this consistent ownership is very important. And just in terms of maybe a final question before we go to, to some of our Slido questions. You know, we started, at the premise of this, this discussion now with the panel is, is that construction is getting it right. I mean, in your opinion, are we getting it right? 
How have we progressed so far? Maybe what are the challenges still that we need to unpack a bit more? Um, I, I mean, I'm happy to start. I, I think there's an awful lot been done in a very short space of time. So I've, I've worked in the sector now on and off for nearly 20 years. And, and there's been huge progress, I think, particularly in the last five. I guess one of the challenges I would put out there is that a lot of that progress has been for example, train people to understand and deal with things once they've happened. I, I think there's more to be done on the preventative and actually getting in there early. Uh, you know, a great example for us is we're, we're now using some of our mental health ambassadors and these are employees that have voluntarily put their hands up and said, I've had a problem, I've had an experience, I've been supported very well in these ways and actually I, I want to share it with others who currently aren't in our company or even in our sector. Um, I can think of one in particular who's getting out into to schools and colleges because I, I look now at you know, all the pressures that were put on me, for example, as a female, once they got into my teenage years, they just accumulated and accumulated and the workplace pressures put me over the top. Um, so, you know, she's great. She goes out and does a lot of promotion, not only about the sector, but also about think about where this might start and here's some strategies for addressing it early because work can sometimes be the tipping point and it was it was interesting to hear uh, uh, you know the, the the duke actually say you know i never thought i'd get to that point where work tipped me over the edge yes um, and, and that that's where i've seen some of our our work go well and i think we need to do more of that focus on stop it happening the conditions that stop it happen I, th I think that's what that's what the future is about because we're, we're doing something great at the moment as a sector. I think on when it has already happened, mm. how to deal with it. Okay. So uh, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, in in the yes side, look, you know, this is if you wind the clock back to when we, you know, we talk about health and safety and we did safety for many years. If you look, if you wind the clock back 30 years to what we did, what we started doing on safety 20 and 30 years ago. Um, and you plot the progress if you want to measure what you've done and instant frequent, which I hate ratios, but anyway, you plot the old curve. And we're up here on this bit on health now. Well, safety's down here somewhere. And on, on health generally and on mental health, we're way up here. We're just starting. So if you like, we're doing the easy bit because we're doing the, we're doing the awareness, we're doing the wake up. So yes, it's a hard bit in terms of what it represents to us, but actually in terms of its impact, you know, when you're doing nothing, you start doing something, uh, you expect probably have the greatest impact. Um, so, so that's good, but we are a hugely disparate industry, as Martin pointed out, and there's real challenges in that about the functional procedure. And of course, this is much wider than just our industry. You know, this is a, a society issue as well. Uh, and I think a lot of things we're doing in, in our world today probably are fueling what's emerging in this. Mm -hmm. So if you like, as a bit of a tidal wave coming at us, that we're just trying to get our minds around how we start to address it and how we're going to live our lives and what we do is changing so fast. And of course, we do everything, everything we've done is based on what we always did. So the challenges that are emerging we're getting our minds around are very different. So, um, you know, construction is getting it right in terms of, yes, it started as recognising, it's starting to talk about it, it's opening it up, uh, but I mean, construction's got an awful lot more to do yet, awful lot more. Are there any particular challenges in terms of that awful lot more to do that you could... Um, <laughs> I think I, I, I do think the I mean, disparate nature of the industry is a big problem, and Martin's right, you know, um, there's a lot of small employers to get to. Uh, I mean, part of the reason we try to roll out so much is I try to involve all our supply chain of all sizes. Mm. And we make this available to everybody and I talk to all and I regularly go and talk to supply chain events and all suppliers about that. But even then, I'm only touching another very small part of it. Mm. And of course, you know, there's great chunks of our industry that never get touched by the major employers. When you walk down, the, walk down you know, the residential streets and see all the small builders there, this is... There's so many people out there to get to, and I think that probably is one of our biggest things. And all those people are still in this place where they're thinking health and safety is a nightmare, health safety is a nightmare in construction. You, know, you still bump into those sorts of conversations when you think how mature we are in other places. So you start to apply that to what's going to... You start to predict how the mental health journey is going to be impacted and how they see that, and some of the old-fashioned behaviours that might, be, that might still be out there, and I think there's some really big challenges in trying to help those people accelerate the journey. Martin, what do you think? One of the things I've learned and what gives me confidence is we don't need to invent anything. There are some absolutely wonderful organisations out there, Mind, Samaritans, Mental Health First Aid, Mental Health Foundation, who have wonderful tools for us, but we, it's the things we don't, we don't know about. Uh, our sector has the Lighthouse Club, which is our charity, uh, which is providing a, an employee assistance programme free of charge for everybody. Uh, the problem is too many people are phoning it up and we need to raise more money for them. And this sort of... <laughs> A difficult situation, a vicious circle if you like, more support requires more 
Um, but we just need to tap into this. We need to be um, working together is really, really important. Uh, and we get great strength from sharing our information. If we can start to get to people and normalise these simple conversations, it just becomes normal and we can really make change. And if there's 2.6 million of us and there's six degrees of separation, the construction sector can lead the way and, and change the UK. Uh, that, that's the potential what we've, we've got in front of us to help make a difference. In terms of um, looking forward then, would you say that it's really around articulating it beyond just the education and training piece then within the organisation? It's really looking further in terms of how the business is really working. Is that the focus of energy now? I'm looking at Dawn. At this. Yeah, I, I, I think that's part of it. Um, I, I think Steve mentioned any point and point about looking beyond your, your own workforce. I mean, we have a huge supply chain. So I look, for example, just at Morgan Sindel. People look on the face, you have 3,500 employees. But yeah, we actually put probably about 15,000 people to work every day. And that's huge. Uh, some of those organisations are very small, but are doing some great things. Mm. Um, you, you know, I, I can think of one, one company who's now a, you know, a subcontractor of ours who actually only employ people who are recovering from mental health issues and I think learning from those small organisations actually big PLCs and some of that sharing across you know just our 15,000 in the supply chain the more we do of that the better um, so yeah I, I, think it, I think it's extending it as wide as we possibly can and not forgetting that construction is much bigger than just the number of people that we directly employ for sure. Fantastic. And just looking in terms of Slido, we did have a question, and perhaps we've touched a bit on it now um, in this last one, but the question is, why do you think construction industry as a sector has been so much more progressive than other sectors in committing to workplace mental health strategies? Martin, I think you're probably best placed. Well, we have a great track record of collaborating over safety. We, we share stuff, we share our best ideas, and this is... A an extension of that. I also think there's um, a recognition that we share the same workforce uh, yeah. and, and the workers go on, on some, some merry-go-round and the dry liners will go and chase the dollar all the time and single out a particular group but everybody moves between everybody else and we've got this healthy respect for one another uh, and what we're going to do is, is, is recognise that there's no right or wrong in, in, in mental health awareness and training. We just accept it all on a voluntary basis, nobody's going to be made to do it like we did with behavioural safety, you know, sheep dipping tens of thousands of men and go and behave in this way. I think the products we've got from the support networks I mentioned earlier mean, mean that we can just work together and share and just get it right. Steve, do you want a final question, final point? Um, yeah, I don't know if we are more progressive. I'll take that as a compliment to the industry. Um, uh, but I guess if we are, the reasons Martin's talked about are probably the reasons. I mean, it's this transient workforce that we are used to sharing. And I think we have, I think we actually, it's quite interesting, um, the openness that surrounded conversations on safety over the last 15 years, um, I think surprised, did surprise many of our clients, many of our customers. There used to be things about, people won't talk about this. When, we st when, when a number of our customers started introducing these forums, where they'd bring suppliers together to talk about things and they sort of put health and safety on the agenda as should we do this and what would happen. They didn't, and I think it was quite a lot of trepidation what sort of conversation would you get. And I think a lot of them were very surprised. But they actually facilitated a lot of conversation because there's areas in our industry where we're not allowed to talk about things. We've obviously got some checkered history in, for the industry in certain aspects. And yet this is one where it was right from the outset it was, it was actually very safe. Everybody embraced talking about what was the health and safety agenda, what was the safety agenda. So I suppose we have got that evidence behind us and actually this hasn't then needed any, any clients to come and give us a nudge to do it. I mean, there's a number of people who've got a similar agenda running and nobody's trying to point score over anybody on this. We're all in it together because uh, we've all got to influence the two million people out there and, and beyond. So I guess we've, we've got that background of why it's happened. So yeah, if we are more progressive, that's, that's great. It would be nice to measure that. Absolutely. I think that's a very positive sounding note on which to end. So thank you very much indeed to my panel and thank you for the questions from, from the floor. Thank you, thank you, Jocelyn, Steve, Martin and Don. I think that was a really great discussion and two very quick points if I might. A story, very brief one and a commercial uh, break. Um, I remember going down into the Crossrail 
um, system in Farringdon and just being astounded by the scale and size of this. And when we talked to the health and safety managers afterwards and said, you know, what, what do you have in terms of physical accidents? They'd had one sprained arm, I think, over the course of a month. And on a project with that scale and ambition, it made me realise that anything's possible. And I guess the opportunity here is the same thing is possible for mental health. So I think a number of those points are true. And Martin mentioned uh, the value of a good support network industry um, and some great charities. I'm going to remind you of one more. Mental Health UK, we are here. We're here to help. So do please pop out and see us over lunch uh, and we can talk to you about how we might be able to help you. So on that note, we're breaking for lunch now. Um, the conference will recommence at 2 o'clock in this room. Our next session is on money and mental health, a double stigma. So very worth coming along to that if you can. Uh, and in the meantime, enjoy lunch. And thank you for coming along. Thank you.